this is, this wow. is your first time here. Wow. What will you describe what you're seeing? Wow. How will you describe it? Wow. It's chaos. This is um. Wow. It looks like this place was was bombed. Wow. The debris. You know, the last time I stood on this sta staircase, mm. there were probably two to three thousand people out here. People having fun, children, adults, old people. So much activity, the golf carts running up and down the boardwalk, moving people around. Look at it, looks like a war zone. You finally gathered the confidence to see the demolition for the first time. Yeah, I don't know whether I really wanted to do this. Um... If you want to hear how a government of a country prioritizes the destruction of investment rather than building it, then look no further. What you are about to watch is a story of how a government of a country that is here to draw any foreign direct investments is assuming office destroyed a $200 million tourist center. This tourist center is tagged the biggest tourist center in Africa and it turned it to a desolate coastline. The story of Paul Owinibe, the CEO of Landmark Africa, is a story of investing in a country where there is no vision. It's investing in a country where there is no rule of law. Let's listen to his story and how he came up with a vision of Landmark Africa. I'll start from the very beginning. Okay, okay. So I was born um, in London, um, in, in London, England. And at the age of 10, because my father was a diplomat, he wanted us to understand Nigeria. So I was sent to boarding school. In the really? Jannikin, yes, in Federal Government College, Lagos, at the age of 10. So initially, obviously, my brother and I, we didn't like it, but after about two, three years, um, we really enjoyed the freedom, the, you know, people like us, and, um, you know, it was, it was good fun. So spent the five years, went back to the UK, did my A-levels, came back to Nigeria to do my jam, and went to the University of Nigeria, read architecture, got interested in buildings and property, Finished architecture, went back to the UK again, did my sort of professional qualifications. But I decided that I liked the business end of property. I then went to work with an entrepreneur, a guy called Mark Dixon. And I tell you something, if anybody tells you entrepreneurs are made, they're not, they're born. Uh, okay. Because this guy was something else. Um, I got my appetite for business then. At some stage, I said to myself, you know what, I want to do my own thing. So in my early 30s, dusted down my CV and my business plan and tried to create this thing called Landmark. And so I did that in the UK, opened up offices in, in, in Spain, in Germany, in France, in Belgium. Over the next sort of four or five years, I realized the African property scene wasn't as developed as one would expect. So I thought, you know what, we need to play in the property market as well. So we got some land holdings. So in 2007, you know, I took a helicopter across Lagos and looked for a place that had potential, but hadn't yet been developed. And this is when I saw this area in, in Oniru. Um, oh, so you saw all of this from, from up there? I saw it from up there. <laughs> it's a lot nicer from up there. Oh, it's nicer from up there. <laughs> <laughs> At least then. <laughs> um, so all from up there. So we dusted down the business plan and we said, you know what, what does Africa really need? We needed to find a way to, to create something. Um, you know, so there was a lot of crime at the time. There were infrastructure issues. There were resource issues. So we thought if you put everything in one place, then people wouldn't have to go anywhere. So mm -hmm. that was the idea, is to create a business, leisure, and lifestyle destination. You know what they say, the opportunity of a lifetime can only be realized in the lifetime of that opportunity. Hmm. So if you, if you wait too long, the same opportunity may be there, but it's not, it doesn't have the same um, makings of it. UK is where everybody wants to run to. Why do you come back here to build your business? Yeah, so, you know, no matter how successful you are in the UK, no matter how long you've lived there, I mean, I think, I, and I can say the same for anywhere outside Africa, uh, outside Africa, is you never really have that proper sense of identity. You always feel you're in a foreign land, in a foreign place. It's almost like leaving your house and visiting a friend and deciding to, to sleep there. You're never as comfortable True. in your friend's house as you are in yours. The second reason was um, because I did my secondary school here, a lot of my friends my, were, were here. Right? And, and we're coming back as well. So I, th I felt I had better relationships and better contacts and, and a better platform um, to, to do something more satisfying, more gratifying. And for anybody out there, I tell you something, the most gratifying thing in the world, no matter how successful you are, right, is looking people in the eyes and changing people's lives, and, but people you can relate to, and people that you know.
tower. So on downstairs, there's retail, then there are offices, there's a hotel, and there's residential, and there's a leisure deck, as you can see. So that was trying to prove our philosophy in one building. So after that, um, we built the proper event center. Then we built an extension to it, and we built the retail boulevard, what we call our retail boulevard. And in that, there's houses, medical facilities, houses, an educational facility, shops, restaurants, bars, offices. Even CNN are in there. Uh, so there. this place is just framework. an ecosystem. And so when you come here, you don't need to leave. That's the idea, you don't need to leave. And by the time we finish, um, really in front of where we're standing, we're about to build um, a residential tower and, and a hotel. Most times when people see stuff like this in Africa, they usually feel it's like some white guy that's behind it. Europe and America are not, uh, they're not easier than Africa, by the way. They have their own challenges. They're just very different challenges. And you know, we had some very strong challenges. So one of the things I, I made up my mind when, when coming to Africa, I said I wanted to create a business in Africa for Africans, run by Africans. Wow. Right? And that's what we do. We, we don't have any foreigners working for us. Everybody's African. Talking about challenges, what are some of the challenges you Oh, God. <laughs> it's a lot. If I could change one thing in Nigeria to be that environment, that enabling environment, I'll create a handshake between the public sector and the private sector because, you know, um, the leverage the public sector can give the private sector to grow businesses, you know, in geometric proportions is immense and they have to do very little things. You know, from registering a company in the UK, it takes you seven minutes. Here, it could take you seven months. Um, sure. It's a little bit better now, but it still takes you a long time. And someone tells you you have to go to Abuja. Why do you have to go, go to somewhere Abuja, so to do something, time, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? The biggest challenge we faced here is before we put a stone in the ground, we had probably spent 20% of the money that we've used to develop this whole space. We wow. probably spent 30% of the time as well. It took us three years to put the stone in the ground because it took us two and a half years to get the first planning consent. Then you have infrastructure issues. So there are no roads, there's no water, there's no electricity. Can you imagine everybody has lights inside their house and there are no lights on the streets. Everybody has water in their house and there's no running water in the streets. The next issue is, is human resources. One in every two young people you meet are in a hurry, right? Um, and, um, you know, you, you require patience to build businesses. You require patience to do a good job. And you, you should always wait your turn. So, like, how many people do you have hired, like, working in a landmark? All right, so we have different levels of structure for them, but so in, in what I would call my um, core team, yes, yeah, so I think they're about 80 people. 80 people? Yeah, and yeah. that's not everybody? No, that's not everybody, no, <laughs> no. They're probably about four, 500. Um, 500 in, people? In, in, the, in the support services as well, right? Wow. Not, not, 500 people not working. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're probably about two to 3,000 people across the ecosystem, or the, all the businesses generated. So there are 59 wow. business, businesses in this ecosystem. 59 businesses. 59 businesses. I see myself, I say to people, look, uh, I see myself as a global citizen, right? Okay. But um, I'm Nigerian to the core. Um, and Nigerian for the, for the simple reason that I believe in Nigeria. I don't describe myself as I'm from the west or the east or yeah. the north. Um, being around the country, most of my friends are from everywhere in, in Nigeria. There's this phrase people say, um, Africa is the future. What, what's your thought on Africa? Oh, without, Africa is really oh, without a shadow of doubt. If you look at everything, just look at how the cards are, are stacked. Look at the demographics. It has more young people than anywhere else. Yes, maybe with the exception of the Far East. Um, look at the strength and the rigor and the hard work and the ethic of Africans. Yeah, so when, you know, you see some of the bad stories, but when you see the good stories, the number of Africans that are prepared to work hard, they're intelligent, they're smart, they're creative and they're aspirational. So you have that. Then you have land. I mean, you just have so much opportunity. I mean, you could sell sand or sell water and do well. Yeah. You wouldn't do the same if you're in Western Germany, right? So, so there's a lot of opportunity here, but you have to be creative and you have to have desire. Um, and if, if you asked me what's the number one thing that creates su success, um, it's just pure desire. Um, that's the number one thing. And after that, other things fall in. But if you don't have desire, then you run away from challenges. In Africa, there are many challenges. <laughs>
do it because you like it, you enjoy it, and you want to change people's lives. Every single business right, that's built on changing people's lives has been successful. So if you focus on something that, that changes people's lives and you're passionate about, you will do very well. Right? And then lastly is, is success is a journey, it's not, it's not necessarily a destination. Tell yourself that you will do things the right way. Um, you will always do it the right way, no matter what the pressures are. Try to be honest. Um, it's, you know, it's difficult. You know, we're all human, and, and, and you know, so I say this with a lot of caution. But, but I think you know, honesty is something that you can't trade. So um, try to be honest all the time. Try to treat people the way you expect to be treated. Um, and when you are successful, try to make sure that all the people around you are successful too. Um, because you know what they say, um, if you focus on making other people successful, you will be successful. Um, and lastly, I have a saying on my wall in my office, and it says that if you want something you've never had, you've got to be prepared to do something you've never done. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks a lot for sharing your story with us. This was an amazing interview, and I'm sure a lot of people out there actually learned a lot from this. It's a pleasure to introduce to you the latest off-plan residential development, Landmark Waterview Apartments. The Landmark Waterview Apartments is a 28-story high-rise residential building set in the heart of the fastest growing business, leisure, and lifestyle destination on the West African coast, Landmark Lagos. Landmark Lagos is a beachfront property conveniently located between the commercial district of- Interesting conversation with the CEO himself. You can feel the burst of energy, the zeal, the enthusiasm to keep on building. You can see a man with an ending vision to build a legacy in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Paul Owinibe obtained that land in 2007 for $17 million. This was a period of economic stability. And when Nigeria and the diaspora were returning home to invest in the country, the effect of this mass return of Nigerians in diaspora and their investment in the country was seen around 2010 to 2012, when the Nigerian economy was rated the third fastest growing economy in the world, alongside China, India, and Dubai. Why the other countries flipped and became a stable economy? The Nigerian economy tanked when jokers and power mongers hijacked the country and ran the economy aground. Since 2015 to date, the Nigeria economy has plummeted aggressively. President Bola Metinibu assumed office in 2023 and continued from his predecessor roadmap of depleting and destroying the Nigeria economy the more. A proposed coastal highway was realigned to pass through the landmark beach. The project has drawn a lot of criticism as it is built on a shady contract, yet to pass impact assessment. Above all, destroy the business that is contributing to the economy. Landmark Beach, the most sought after beach in Africa, a $200 million investment. Let's find out the aftermath. Everything that Paul Longunibe suffered to build has been destroyed. The long years of thinking, the long years of investing, the long years of hope to build a legacy in Lagos, destroyed by the federal government. A 200 million most sought after beach resort in Africa has been turned to a desolate coastland within a twinkle of an eye. Demolition? Yes. Have you ever been there to see what really happened? No, I haven't. It's been seven days and as you can imagine we've been involved with um, sort of picking up the pieces. Um, so we try not to feel sorry for ourselves, but there are a lot of things to do, you know, all sorts of contracts, supplier contracts, advertising contracts, picking up the pieces, figuring out what we're going to do, where we're going to store things and stuff. Um, but you know, over the last 18 years, um, we've built this place, um, especially actively in the last sort of six to seven years. Um, it's not really something I want to see the destruction and the um, chaos of it um, at this point in time, whilst we're still trying to rebuild my all of my attentions are on looking forward rather than the past um, 
So, are you are you trying to say that you don't have the heart to say what happened? Well, we don't know yet, but um, you know, people talk about mental state, and so far my mental state is still very good, um, and I don't know whether this is what can trigger it. So I'd rather not just see the destruction now, so I can focus rather than um, focus on the past and 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 get bitter. It's better for me to just focus on a bright future. This is wow. your first time here. Wow. What will you describe what you're seeing? Wow. How will you describe it? Wow. This chaos. This is um. Wow. It looks like this place was was bombed. Wow. The debris. You know, the last time I stood on this stair staircase. Mm. There are probably two to three thousand people out here. People having fun, children, adults, old people. So much activity, the golf carts running up and down the broadwalk, moving people around. Look at it, looks like a war zone. You finally gathered the confidence to see the demolition for the first time. Yeah, I don't know whether I really wanted to do this. Um, you know, um, it's been it's been a, just over a week, and I haven't I haven't been down here um, because I didn't really want to. I wanted to um, remember it in its, in its glory and use that as a motivation to recreate it. Um, I just you still have plans recreating it? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to do something bigger and better. Um, we have to reprovide. You know, 4,000 jobs. We have to provide this tourism platform. The hopes and aspirations of a lot of thousands of people rest on us. So, you know, we've got to do it. We don't have a choice. Well, can you tell me what inspires you? <sighs> you know, we've been here for 18 years, literally here. Um, and I've watched the lives of so many people change. Um, not just the people who work here and interact with here, but the local community, even the people, the service agents. Look, let me just give you an example. We sell half a million bottles of water. Right? If you think of the value chain that leads up to that. So think of things like the chicken, the paper cups, the straws, the, the food, the, you know, the people who come and clean the windows, that clean the soil. You know, the, the economic, act, the socio-economic activity um, is huge. Apart from that, just the lifestyle change. This is one of the only family-centric places literally on this coastline. You know, we, we sit here today and... What is, what is going through your mind right now, seeing this for the first time? A baby that you give birth to, watch it grow, and today the baby is no more. So, you know, I didn't really want to come here because I didn't want it to drive me into depression, to be honest, right? Nah, I'm um, so sorry for bringing you <laughs> out. No, but, but, I am so sorry. But having said that, you know, um, you know, you know, coming here even inspires me more. You know, look, Ten days ago, there were thousands of people here um, visiting and enjoying a lifestyle, interacting with the waterfront. There were thousands of people working for a living. There were happy families. Um, and there was a lot of socioeconomic activity. Um, ten days later, it's rubble. Right? Um, you have to find a way to reconcile that in your mind. And when you reconcile it, you've got to find a way for it to motivate you to do something bigger and better. The hopes and aspirations of thousands and thousands of people rest on, on our ability to turn the corner on this. I mean, coming from Ghana, I know there's so many people from different countries that will be watching this video and they really want to understand why the demolition. So simple. Um, you know, by the way, I've had three different pre African presidents call me to sympathize and to also invite me to their countries to, <laughs> to do something similar, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so one has to respect that someone has made a decision that the first one and a half kilometers of this road is more important than the social economic activity that that has created. So obviously the right of way for the coastal road was moved um, from the median of Water Corporation Road right onto our beach and immediately after our beach it turns back to join the Water Corporation Road. Someone has made that decision that that is more important than the social economic activity that we created on this beach. And that's okay. Um, you have to respect 
the right or, um, the right of the government to do that. It's not illegal. It's the absolute right to be created for under the principles of eminent domain. Um, so we've got to find a way to recreate this and we've got to work with the government. You know, I'm not bitter and I'm not fighting, but we've got to work with the government to figure out how we can be compensated adequately to continue this socio-economic activity. Um, although our story has been told widely, but look, if I were making a decision, it would be a different decision, obviously, but mm. I have to respect the rights of the people who made this decision. And so be it. Um, you know, we've got to find a way to rebound and to recreate. Uh, we have so much riding on the success of our platform. We have a lot of investors, a lot of creditors, a lot of staff, um, a lot of businesses. Um, this beach wiped away 50% of our income and 50% of our business. The other 50%, we've got to find a way to make it make up for 100% and grow bigger and better. In the last time I spoke to you, you encouraged more Africans to invest in Africa, especially yeah. where they come from. Yeah, yeah. And this has happened. Will you, will you say exactly the same thing? Yes, I will, for many reasons. You know, look, you know, a country, a country is more than just a, situa a series of bad incidences and challenges. Yeah? A country represents the hopes and aspirations of hundreds, in this case, hundreds of millions of people. Uh, we don't have other, another country. This is the country we have, right? Um, and the only way it's going to progress is, is one. Um, socio-economic activity does take place to the people who have experience and exposure and talent um, apply it here. Three is we ensure we always have good government and good governance and transparent and authentic processes. And, um, and I'll say lastly, uh, we need to bottle up and ignite the, the hopes and aspirations of, of all the citizens to just make sure this place is better. We, we have no choice. You're not um, giving up on Nigeria? Whew, gosh, i tell you something. My first... Um, uh, five minutes ago when you brought me out here I looked at this and I thought you know what I should just go back to London um, no no, no, no I'm, 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 right. I can't right. I can't see how I can give up on, on, on Nigeria. Nigeria I don't have another country the questions that everyone is asking were you giving notice about the road yeah no every, everyone is asking we got official so you know there have been rumours for a year or so um, you know um but, you know, when you're running a business like this, you have a lot of movements and a lot of people in your ears and stuff. Um, but, you know, we received official notice on the 19th of March. And we were given seven days to evacuate. I joked that I couldn't move out of my bedroom in seven days, right? <laughs> Let alone a place you've created over 18 years. But, um, you look, as I said, it is, it will be less than realistic of me to criticize the decision that has been made that has passed. You know, we've now got to pick up the pieces and figure out how we, we make hay while the sun is still shining. So how do we, how do, we do this for the rest of the business? The, all the people who bought into Waterview Apartment, we intend to deliver a, a sterling you know, business level, leisure and lifestyle um, that when they, when they come here to live, that they will enjoy. Um, we need to make sure that all our remaining tenants and all our remaining infrastructure perform to the best of their ability. And we need to recreate this for all the jobs and, and the businesses that enjoyed it. So, um, you have any way in mind in Nigeria to replace this? We have three, we've looked at three different sites, um, you know, um, all, all in, in, in Lagos. Um, we have offers from three different state governments as well. Well, two of them are incredibly serious. Um, we have um, agreements on the table to be signed um, to, to do this, um, both of them on the waterfront. Um, we need to do something in Lagos. Um, a lot of that will depend on how the government supports us with compensation to, 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 to give us enough legs to create it. Um, you know, as you know, we have investors and, and creditors who are jumping up and down, mm. right? So, so we've got to figure out how we create some clarity and, and, and move forward. But the question is, will you be compensated? Well, that's not a question for me, right? And we're in conversations. Look, for over 42 billion naira of infrastructure has been damaged, has been washed away. Um, the income streams and, and the businesses here have all been washed away. Um, so all that has to be recreated. And I think someone somewhere has to make a decision whether they want to recreate it or not, right? Our part is that we've made that decision to recreate it. Um, we do need help. Um, there's absolutely no business can lose what we have lost and are not feeling. So, so we, we'll see. We haven't been compensated yet, but well, we hope to. Your final message to um, 
Nigerians, especially landmark lovers? That, well, the final message is, look, this is a disaster and there are many disasters and there are many challenges. For us, it's a disaster. We're devastated and we don't pretend not to be in pain. Having said that, we take the decision on the chin. We will need to work with the government and work with the stakeholders and the environment to create something bigger and better. Um, and we will do that within the next 12 months. My hope is that if we do close on one of these um, sites that we've seen, we will create this leisure and lifestyle um, beachfront somewhere else and we'll be open by Christmas. Um, so, so watch this space, um, believe in us, trust in us, pray for us, support us, and um, we'll make sure we don't disappoint, we will deliver. The opportunity of a lifetime can only be realized in the lifetime of that opportunity, and that opportunity is right now.